هذه الزراعة الحديثة والمتطورة في ايرو فارمز لها وقع وتأثير كبيرين في عدة اتجاهات على عدة أصعدة منها التأثير الاقتصادي على المستثمرين والتأثير البيئي الكبير على العناصر المحيطة بالزراعة وعلى كمية المحصول الزراعي والمساحة المستخدمة والتأثير الاجتماعي وخلق فرص عمل ووظائف جديدة للعمال والمتخصصين خريجي الجامعات وتأثيرات عدة أخرى عن كل هذه العناصر وتفاصيلها طرحت السؤال على المؤسس المشارك والرئيس التنفيذي لأيرو فارمز ديفيد روزنبرغ proud of the capital we've raised from the likes of Prudential, Goldman Sachs, uh, GSR, leader investment investor in LED investments out of China, another investor called Midland, which is a leader in agriculture, another one, Wheat Sheaf, a leader in agriculture, and Mission Point, a leader in impact investing. Another group is the environmental impact. So in this category, In agriculture in general, agriculture uses over 60% of the world's fresh water. It attributes to pollution or its impact on pollution. Unfortunately, 60% of the world's fresh water pollution comes from agriculture. Additionally, the world's lost 30% of its arable land in the last 40 years. In this category of leafy greens that we grow, you have tremendous production consolidation where most of this is produced in California where you have severe droughts. And in fact, water is shipped from the Colorado River to California, and people are sucking more and more groundwater. So you think of the depletion of arable land, fresh water. Addition, you have, in addition, you have population growth. You have trends in urbanization. By some estimates, we need 50% more food by 2050. So now you look at arrow farms. We could take a plant and grow it using approximately 95% less water in these grow towers and our productivity per square foot is 130 times that of a field farmer, meaning what they could grow in one square foot, we could do 130 times that amount, and we do that using zero soil. So we're not depleting valuable nutrients from the soil. In addition, we've developed closed-loop systems that remove algae and keep the nutrients and micronutrients using advanced filtration systems that avoids any sort of runoff, but also helps keep that water usage low. And all these technologies are, are also utilize a way of growing without pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. So when people buy organics, most of their inspiration is they don't want the chemicals. So this is residue free without the chemicals of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Our cloth, which is a growth media, is cloth instead of soil, barriers the fertilizers. So the leaves stay pristine and it doesn't need a washing. Washing is where, from a food safety standpoint, you have a micro-contamination becomes a macro-contamination in the washing. And that's further significant because in this category of leafy greens, 11% of all food contamination comes from leafy greens. If you think of salmonella, listeria, E. coli, leafy greens is a big part of this. We eliminate the washing step because we eliminate the use of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. And the washing also further damages the leaf, and then you have to dry it, which further damages the leaf, and then often your packaging and moisture, which further damages the leaf, which gets to another impact. In this category, over 60% of the food that comes off a farm spoils. So there's incredible spoilage in the supply chain. By growing locally, where you have a 12-day shelf life, we get it to the supermarkets in day one or two instead of day five. It's keeping product available to be eaten a much longer amount of time. So that speaks to all of our environmental impact. And then the third meaningful impact is the social impact. And here, we typically go in underprivileged cities where the economics aren't as strong as other cities and we're helping alleviate food deserts. We help employ locally. In fact, at our ninth facility, which is in Newark, we've hired nine past offenders. And most of all is inspiration. What we do is we're leading a new trend of the world, this new way of growing our food, and the innovation is fantastic. And it's exciting to the community that's proud to have us as one of their own not just hiring within, but the talent that's coming to Aero Farms. As we speak, I have about 32 resumes from MIT. 
And we already have a bunch of people from MIT, from Harvard, from Columbia, from top universities. And we have all this talent coming to Aero Farms. We're about 112 people by last count. And these are engineers, mechanical engineers, structural engineers, lighting engineers, electrical engineers, PLC engineers, process engineers, all working on the mechanical frames, how the frames, the pumps, the lights, the airflow all interact. And then we have crop biologists, crop physiologists, crop pathologists, molecular biologists, microbiologists, all working to optimize the biology. The intersection of all that, we have programmers, data scientists, that are understanding the plants, understanding the data from the farm system, and giving it to the R&D team to optimize these tastes, textures, nutritional densities, and yields. كيف تعمل الأبراج الزراعية دون شمس ودون تراب؟ الفرق بين الزراعة بالمياه والزراعة برذاذ المياه هل لهذه الزراعة العمودية مستقبل في الشرق الأوسط؟ في هذه المزرعة العمودية الداخلية إيرو فارمز لزراعة الخضار الورقية بمدينة نوورك بولاية نورجيرزي والتي لا تعتمد على الشمس والتربة هناك العنصر الأساس فيها الأبراج الزراعية الذكية التي تبنى على نظام الوحدات بقياسات وارتفاعات مختلفة داخل العنابر أو المستودعات فما هي أهم التقنيات التي تميز هذه الأبراج؟ Each one of our growing towers is really a living computer. There's sensors, there's monitors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a whole control. So we think about the lighting, the misting of the roots with the nutrients. We think about how we create the perfect environment for the plants. And here, we're seeing some of the initial plants in the number of days. This is probably about four days. Mm -hmm. So we went from the seeding to the germination to now to the growing. And we're creating you know, the right level of spectrum of light, the intensity, the frequency. Uh, we're delivering the right kind of nutrients it needs at this stage. And we're able to create, you know, thinking about all those inputs, a faster growing process and have a better product at the end. We like to think of ourselves as the apple of farming, right? So we've built the hardware, we've built the growing set towers, the, the, the mechanical part. We've developed the software, the growing algorithms. But what makes Apple so special is the operating system. It's how the two work together. Mm -hmm. And we think that's very much the approach we've taken with growing. So it's more secure, it's more uh, consistent, and allows us to understand how to optimize both in, when we think about the whole equation. The sun and the wind. Here you have the light and the fans. What the fans has to do here? So you think about the fans and what we're doing there. So mm -hmm. a few things. One, you can think about uh, the idea of just even stressing the plants so we can help harden the plants. Mm -hmm. So again, they have a very much a pampered life. We're giving them exactly what they need. So we stress them a little bit with some air movement. The other part, though, is that we're actually able to distribute CO2 so we can have more effective photosynthesis. So actually in this environment, we have supplemental CO2 higher than the normal levels. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the factors that we can have more effective photosynthesis. What do we have here inside this black box? So this is what we call a drip pan. And this is actually where the misting uh, the is misting. happening. So how we deliver the nutrients, it's being dispersed in a mist. And so we're able to give you know, the specific droplet to the root. And we're looking at the, even down to the micron size of that droplet to see and how to enhance the absorption rate. And we're constantly monitoring the macro and micronutrients as well. Mm -hmm. So again, this is about how we can be more targeted with that and more precise. And then thinking about, again, that plant nutrition, plant health, and how that translates into human health as well. ما هو الفرق بين الزراعة مباشرة في المياه والزراعة بالرذاذ؟ فما هي فوائد رش جذور الشتل برذاذ المياه؟ So the benefits of aeroponics are several fold. Uh, one is what roots actually need is oxygen, right? And so this is one of the ways by just simply misting it and actually having air there as well, we are actually able to enhance the growing uh -huh. process. If it's sitting in water, growers have to oxygenate the water as well. So it's another step, another cost, another level. And this allows it to what the you know, roots actually want. Because it's a mist, we actually actually be more targeted in terms of that water delivery as well as the nutrient delivery. And so it's much more efficient. It's much faster as well. So we're able to grow and have more biomass in a shorter period of time. So it has some significant advantages for us. Mm -hmm. We talk about this being really the heart of the growing system. So we have uh, the power, we have our PLCs, and it's very elaborate in terms of how we integrate those sensors. For example, that's a sensor. This is a sensor there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but so that, what the sensor is sensing now? 
So temperature, humidity, there's a number of factors, CO2. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of things that we were able to utilize in the whole entire environment to make sure we're monitoring, understanding the actual uh, environmental aspects as well. At Aero Farms, we're very proud of the way we grow, and we work with the customer to educate them our key questions to ask. So for example, we grow without pesticides, and right on our label we state grown without pesticides, no fungicides, no herbicides. When people buy organic, sometimes they think they're getting no pesticides, when in fact they're getting organic pesticides. So here, we call out what we do. We grow without uh, using 95% less water. And what I hope the customer ends up getting intellectually curious with how we grow, growing without sun, without soil in these vertical stacks, not in greenhouses, but warehouses, where it's a very safe product and we could really influence the nutritional density. We decided we're not going to uh, fight the fight in terms of whether the label says organics or not. Organics is moving to a definition of in soil. So we don't grow in soil. And as such, we want to keep mother nature and those nutrients in the soil there, not taking them out. The world has lost a third of its arable land. Sometimes the best thing you could do is just leave the farmland alone. The way our customers, the supermarkets, position us is as beyond organic. Appreciating that when people buy organics, they think they're buying no pesticides, when in fact, there are about 10 certified organic pesticides. So our customers are positioning us as beyond organic, not organic pesticides, but zero pesticides. So we've gotten letters, phone calls, saying how excellent our arugula, our kale, our watercress is. Who writes to their farmer complimenting their product, but we get those calls and where people say, I didn't know kale could taste this way. And I'll give you an example. Kale is typically bitter and rough. So we've grown kale using the same seed that's more tender and sweeter. And that gets customers excited and coming back more again and again. And for the customers that are curious about how we grow and we explain what the, cut, the, what the plants want, they don't want sun, they want spectrum. They don't want soil, they want nutrients. They want micronutrients. And when we explain, we give them spectrum from LEDs and we give them nutrients and micronutrients, different minerals and elements broken out, zinc, iron, and so forth, they get it. And again, once they taste it, they're amazed and excited about the taste profiles. محصول ايرو فارمز من الخضار الورقية اتخذ مؤخرا علامة تجارية جديدة باسم جديد وهو دريم جرينز باصناف مختلفة من هذه الخضار الورقية. So now we are at the last stop. The final product from ايرو فارمز is here. So we have the four main products that you have now in the market. Correct. So we've grown over 250 different types of leafy greens and herbs. And at any point in time right now, we're growing between 10 to 15 for our different selling partners. Mm -hmm. And so they're going into different blends, different standalone items. And here's just a small representation you know, of what we have out in the marketplace. Uh, we start with the baby kale. Please try. This is what we do all day. We graze. <laughs> and so we think about what is it that the marketplace is looking for. We put together. We think about the shape, size, we specify. Very fresh. It's got a great bite, great chew, very tender. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a, a sweet finish to it. From the kale to watercress, also one of the most nutritionally dense. It's very bright, has a little bit of heat in the spice. Mm. This is our baby arugula. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really are focusing on here and really celebrating is the pepperiness. And so we're really accentuating a bold punch of flavor. And this is our spring mix that includes some of the things we just tried. We also have something here called the Ruby Streak Mustard Green. So if you just try that by itself, you can actually taste mustard notes on it. And just a beautiful color. You can see the, it's like a frisee, but beautiful red. But it has a little bit of heat and finish. And then if you grab a little bit, so in here, this mix, we also have baby pak choy, some of the Asian greens. And then all of a sudden you get these layers of flavor and you can just see the different colors, different shapes. كيف يمكن نقل هذه التجربة التقنية الزراعية حول العالم وبالتحديد من أمريكا إلى الدول العربية في الشرق الأوسط التي تخلق مفهوما جديدا للصناعة الزراعية والمحصول الزراعي
الذي ينتقل من تقليدي إلى عصري مضمون النتائج والجودة At Aerofarms, we certainly have an inter international lens. I personally am a member of the B20 Resource Efficiency Task Force, was a member of the Small Medium Enterprise Task Force. The B20 advises the G20. I also I co-chair the Circular Economy Task Force for the World Economic Forum that has its uh, annual meeting in Davos, but has another meeting in Jordan or Sharm el-Sheikh or other parts of the world. And appreciating it's important the value we bring is not just for the U.S. but how do we make this quality of food available to people all over the world for example we think the Middle East is a prime market for several reasons one there's arable there's not that much arable land there's big issues of water security there's uh, sometimes uh, not that much water in some areas as well as one of the biggest parts of our cost of goods sold is energy and there's cheap, relatively cheap energy in, in the Middle East. One of the tensions of going there is where, what populations eat a lot of salads. So when we think about market share, we ask, do people eat salads? And while in some areas like Lebanon or Dubai, people might eat salads. In other areas, it's just not as much part of the evening habits. Sometimes they eat mint and parsley, but not so much others. And that's a shame because this, again, is the most healthy food group and we know there's like a tradition of diabetes and, and other things like that in the Middle East. So hopefully palates change, eating habits change. People look more to what nutrients they're putting in their body, not towards how much calories I'm putting in their, their body and yeah. embrace this category of food. And where it's embraced, there is a big opportunity to build great farms in that part of the world to feed the population. شاهدنا معا في اي تك من الزراعة التقليدية إلى الزراعة الذكية الداخلية ايرو فارمز بأمريكا أكبر مزرعة عمودية في العالم كيف تعمل الأبراج الزراعية دون شمس ودون تراب الفرق بين الزراعة بالمياه والزراعة برذاذ المياه هل لهذه الزراعة العمودية مستقبل في الشرق؟